Okay, it's time to go to bed. Here's your milk. You ready? No, I don't want to go to bed. Why not? Too scared of the dark. I'd like to meet you, but I'll bet you're hoping for a hug. I'm drinking milk, though. Milk's about the best thing I can drink right now to help me build strong arms, powerful legs, and a broad chest. And when all my work is done, will you love me just for my body? Milk. For generations, it has been touted as a superior source of calcium, protein, and many other important nutrients. Want to grow? The calcium in milk helps bones grow. But milk is much more than that. It is the single most powerful and nutritionally complete food on this planet. So powerful that it alone can support a newborn mammal in its most crucial and vulnerable period of life. Of course, humans throughout history have realized the powerful qualities of milk, and it has been the backbone of many of the most successful civilizations, whether that's the Egyptians, the Mongols, or the Vikings. Even in more recent times, we see how milk has supported entire civilizations and made the people thrive. The indigenous people of the Swiss mountains were famous for having a diet that consisted almost exclusively of dairy products and rye bread. Fresh milk, cheese, and butter was on the menu every single day. These people were observed and described in the book Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, written by American dentist Weston Price. Weston Price would note how these dairy-consuming people were some of the healthiest and happiest he had ever observed. The children had impressive physiques, perfect facial structure, and fully developed dental arches. Modern disease was also completely non-existent among these people. The people themselves attributed their phenomenal physical attributes to the nutrients they got from their milk, butter, and cheese products. Other dairy-consuming tribes have since been studied, for example the Maasai tribe in Africa, who are some of the tallest, healthiest, and most athletic people alive. It seems that milk is able to support the human body like nothing else. This of course shows in our modern world, where many of our favorite western foods have some kind of dairy component to it. Cheesy pizza, ice cream, pasta dishes, cheeseburgers, Mexican food, the list goes on. As humans, we simply love dairy. It is built into every fiber of our genetic material. Luckily for us, milk access seems to be abundant all over the world. We see it in every single supermarket we go to. But did you know that all of this milk right here is actually not even real milk? It is in fact much better described as a milk-like substance. It bears close to zero resemblance to the milk that the Vikings, the indigenous Swiss, and the Maasai relied upon. It is filled with problematic contents, and it is a mockery of what milk is supposed to be. If we want to understand this and the effects it has on our health, we must dive into the peculiar history of modern milk production. In the plant, the milk is pasteurized in special equipment, which heats it to a certain temperature for a definite period of time to destroy or render harmless all disease-producing organisms which may be present in the milk. Forward through the pasteurizing coils, heated to 162 degrees as it goes, cooled to under 40, and always moving forward. This rapid heating assures absolute purity without changing or affecting the flavor of the milk. The milk moves on to the next processing operation, homogenization with pressures up to 3,000 pounds, and temporarily held in large tanks, ready to be packaged and distributed to you. Take a look at these two glasses of milk. They look pretty similar, right? Well, that's because they are similar. In fact, they are from the very same cow. Yet these two glasses of milk have a nutritional difference so big that they can't even be considered the same food. How can this be? It is because this milk is pasteurized, while this is not. If you don't know what pasteurization is, it is the process of heating milk to very high temperatures for short durations of time. Supposedly, this is done in order to kill pathogens, but often it is also used to extend shelf life. Pasteurization happens to 99% of the dairy products that make their way to the supermarket today. In fact, unpasteurized milk, also known as raw milk, is outlawed in most places. Now, from an outside perspective, pasteurization seems great, right? Killing pathogens, why wouldn't we want that? Well, because this also just so happens to kill all other beneficial life that exists in the milk. It doesn't look very controversial until you start asking about what happened to it before it arrived in this glass. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration says that for safety reasons, milk needs to be pasteurized, heated to at least 160 degrees. Milk not pasteurized is known as raw milk, 
which the FDA says can harbor dangerous microorganisms. But now pasteurization is increasingly under attack. That makes the milk, quote, safe to drink, but it doesn't make it healthy to drink. Ron Schmidt is an author and a naturopathic physician who's an expert on this topic. Pasteurization heats the milk to at least 160 degrees or so, even higher for ultra-pasteurized. And in the process, it kills harmful bacteria. It also kills all of the beneficial bacteria that make fresh food what human beings thrive upon. So you wind up with a dead food. Milk is very unique. It is more alive than any other food on this planet. So alive that it takes itself apart and becomes sour within hours if it is not immediately cooled. The reason for this vibrational quote, aliveness, is due to rich quantities of probiotics and enzymes. Among many other important functions, the probiotics and enzymes found in milk helps to break down and absorb the milk itself. From a natural standpoint, this makes perfect sense. After all, Milk is supposed to be consumed by baby mammals, who have not yet developed a full digestive system. Even the slightest bit of solid food would upset their newly born stomach, and they would not be able to digest one bit of it. This is the genius of nature, because within fresh milk, it has planted a literal self-consuming stomach. With the help of its many probiotics and enzymes, milk is able to digest itself within the baby's gut, and deliver all nutrients that the child needs. Along with this, it also colonizes the child's gut, giving it the ability to digest things that are not milk. As the famous proverb goes, milk for babes and meat for men. However, this metaphor should not be taken too literally, because it is not only children who benefit from the abundant amount of probiotics, enzymes, fats and vitamins found in milk. All humans, no matter the age, will receive a significant health boost upon consuming high quality raw milk. To understand this, let us first understand what the word enzyme even means and how it makes milk such a special food. Enzymes are simply proteins that serve two functions. They can either take an advanced molecule, like food, or even a toxic substance, and break them down into smaller materials that can be reused by the body or eliminated as waste. Or they can take smaller molecules and bind them together to make more advanced molecules that the body can then use. Now, in relation to milk, there is one enzyme in particular who plays a very important role. This enzyme is called lactase, the lactase enzymes found in milk is there in order to break down the milk sugars, also known as lactose. This is essentially what is supposed to provide the newborn mammal with energy. In fact, lactose is pure energy, and it is a very important and precious part of milk. But the baby cannot digest anything, so milk fills itself with lactase enzymes in order to break down the lactose. In short, it looks like this. Milk comes in, lactase enzymes break down the lactose, Lactose sugars are converted into energy in the baby. So this makes lactase enzymes a pretty integral and important part of milk. Without these enzymes, the milk would turn into indigestible sugar water. Well, guess what happens to them when they are exposed to pasteurization? They die. All of them die. Now, the lactose is still there, but there are no enzymes to digest it. This is going to cause all kinds of problems within the gut. So now you know why everyone and their mother seems to be going around thinking they are lactose intolerant. These people are not lactose intolerant. No one is. They are lactase deficient. They are consuming dead, pasteurized dairy products that have been emptied of all enzymes. This is why people who think they are lactose intolerant will have no issues once they switch to raw milk. Because raw milk has all enzymes intact. It's crazy how nature does that, right? And it's even crazier how modern man thinks he has to fix nature with his technological pasteurization equipment, which paradoxically doesn't actually fix anything, but makes everything even worse. But wait, there's more. Because pasteurization not only kills the important enzymes found in milk, it also kills pretty much everything else of value. According to a multitude of research outlined in the Raw Milk Institute, pasteurization has been shown to reduce the bioavailability of calcium and phosphorus. In fact, it hardens the calcium, making it impossible for your body to absorb reduce the presence of copper and iron, reduce vitamins A, B complex, C and E, destroy probiotics including lactobacillus and pediococcus, and as mentioned, inactivate beneficial enzymes including lactase, alkaline phosphatase and lactoperioxidase. So on one hand, we have fresh raw milk, 
the highest vibrating and most nutrient dense food on this planet. And on the other hand, we have pasteurized milk, essentially dead sugar water. Let's do one last quick comparison of these two foods. In raw cow's milk we have active enzymes, active probiotics, active healthy fats, intact proteins, active vitamins, and active calcium. In pasteurized cow milk we have inactive enzymes, destroyed probiotics, altered fats, altered proteins, altered vitamins, and inhibited calcium. These are two foods that most people today would deem to be completely identical. However, when we look at the nutritional aspects, it becomes very clear that they cannot even be compared. One is a natural living whole food, and the other is a dead food-like substance. I can't think of anything more wasteful that we do than to pasteurize our milk, because what pasteurization does, it doesn't get rid of the nutrients in the milk, it destroys the enzymes that you need to absorb those nutrients. And raw milk is a complete meal in a glass that's very easy to absorb and a particularly important food for growing children. It's rich in animal fat, which is good. <laughs> animal fats are uh, from quality animals are the best thing in the world for people and, and most people are starving for the nutrients that are in the animal fat. There are those that are opposed to having the choice of raw milk. They would like you to believe, or at least they imply, that pasteurization guarantees safety. And the fact of the matter is, it doesn't. I mean, the scientific record clearly shows that there have been outbreaks from the consumption of pasteurized milk. As a matter of fact, one of them was a massive outbreak uh, back in the 1980s when over 168,000 people were sickened from salmonosis, and it was pasteurized milk. One of the most notable recent examples is um, a case of pasteurized milk being linked to the death of three people in Massachusetts, and it, in that case it was listeria. So it's actually more dangerous to drink pasteurized milk than raw milk. We can just look at the statistics. We, we have looked at the numbers, we've done the number crunching. You're 35,000 times more likely to become ill from other foods than you are from raw milk on a per serving basis. Raw milk from healthy grass-fed animals is a traditional food that human beings have used for at least 10 or 12,000 years and thrived on. It's a wonderful food and the problem really is its lack of availability in the United States because of draconian laws about it. It's a corporate agenda. Some four or five companies control all of the dairy sales in the United States and they're very happy to have no raw milk available anywhere. In 1946 there were over a million farms, an average of eight cows each, selling raw milk to their neighbors and friends. And those farms are all lost. You know, there are some 90,000 left, and they're largely big operations with hundreds of cows and not out on pasture and selling milk that has to be pasteurized because if it wasn't, it would be dangerous. At this point we have to wonder, why does it remain illegal to consume raw milk in most of the western world? A pure good-hearted person might say that the government is just trying to protect us. That is a very nice thought, but I'm afraid it's also a very delusional one. In order to find the true motivations behind the move towards milk pasteurization, we will have to go back in time. 
It all started in the mid 1800s when children started getting sick and even dying after drinking milk from so-called swill dairies. Swill dairies were filthy and tiny stables built next to beer and whiskey distilleries. Cows were crowded into these stables and fed leftover whiskey swill from the distilleries. Now, as you might have guessed, this had all sorts of impacts on the milk they produced. For one, the cows were extremely sickly and often had to be held up with ropes in order for them to get milked. The milk they produced was thin, filled with pus and even had a bluish color. To combat this, dairy producers simply enriched the milk with flour and chalk to give it back its natural white color and make it appear fresh. But the milk wasn't fresh. It was deadly. People started getting sick, especially infants and children, and many even died. Luckily, people quickly connected the dots, and the swelled dairies were eventually shut down. Along with this, refrigerators were invented, and a certified raw milk movement was established. This made raw milk safe to drink again. Around this time, it was also discovered that pasteurization killed bacteria in milk. Pasteurized milk and clean raw milk was produced and sold side by side, until the 1930s when milk production became more industrialized. State governments supported the move towards pasteurization and passed many laws making it near impossible to obtain raw milk. But you'll never guess who was one of the forerunners for this pasteurization movement. It was a family with a name you might have heard before. A group of people who belonged to one of the most powerful and wealthy bloodlines on this earth. The Rockefellers. In 1933, Rockefeller Dairy patented new and expensive industrial machinery with the purpose of pasteurizing milk. But the Rockefellers needed demand for their new industrial machinery. And what better way of creating demand than by making it mandatory by law? With their wide range of governmental contacts and deep wealth, the Rockefellers managed to lobby a new law in place. This law stated that all milk should henceforth be pasteurized. Now this caused an outrage among small farmers, and many of them protested the law. These farmers had no way of affording the expensive pasteurization machinery, which was now required by law. Almost all of them were forced out of business. Thousands of small farms were eradicated, and the production of dairy consolidated into big industrial dairy companies. Fast forward almost a century, and most people in the Western world have never consumed milk that has not been sterilized. Many are even disgusted by the thought of drinking raw milk, and will only drink milk that has been pasteurized, sterilized, homogenized, and emptied of all life. What's going on with the status of production of conventional milk in America? It's a tragedy. Consumers are just not buying it anymore because what they're getting right now in America is a product which is listed as the most allergenic food in America at the FDA website and non-digestible by at least 40 to 50% of the population. A raw milk is non-allergenic and practically everybody can digest it because it's not associated with lactose intolerance. You go to the doctor with asthma, allergies, eczema, and most doctors will say, get off dairy, get off dairy. Well, now we're having doctors say, get on raw dairy, because the 17 big, huge studies in Europe actually show that raw milk is very good for allergies. It makes eczema go away. It's great for Crohn's disease. It's fantastic for asthma. What is milk? It's the first food of life. And the real problem is the fact that we've sterilized the, the first food of life that actually keeps us immune depressed. If you think about the immune system as being in the gut, 80% or more of the immune system is in the gut. And what are we doing to the immune systems nowadays? Antibiotics for every sniffle, sterilized foods, Purell, you name it. We are literally sterilizing our gut. In Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, one of the dystopian aspects being depicted is the sterilization and cleanliness of humans and society. One aspect of this reference is that the entire population is literally sterile and cannot impregnate each other because all babies are made at fertilization factories. However, I would like to propose an alternative way of viewing this sterilization and cleanliness of society, one that might seem more applicable to our current world. I'm of course referring to our fixation of cleanliness and eradication of germs. We seem to have taken this fixation to neurotic heights. We have declared a war on every single microorganism and are now in the midst of a zero germ strategy. This, of course, is all a product of how far we have removed ourselves from nature. We seem to think that we can somehow get by with this zero germ strategy, while at the same time not realizing that germs make up everything that we call life. In fact, the word germ itself is a word meant to depict life, not death. Ask any person today what the word germ means, and 99.99% will say that it's some kind of disease-causing entity that is an enemy of the human body. But this is an inversion of the truth. 
the germ is the life-giving source of a seed. To some, this might seem like unimportant semantics, but it's not. It's a perfect example of the powers that have taken hold within us. A war has been declared. A war on life and creation itself. Sanitation and cleanliness have become some of the most important social virtues. Everything within our reach is being sanitized to death. Ultra-high pasteurization, heat treatment, ethanol sanitation, antibiotics, chemical treatment, destruction and sterilization. The soil used to be fertile, but we have made it sterile. Chemicals have contaminated our food, water and bloodstreams, all in an attempt to save us from the dangerous natural germs. Ask yourself the question, did humans really get this far in evolution by killing every microscopic bacteria around them? If we co-evolved with these organisms, is it really in our best interest to engage in chemical warfare on them? It's all quite paradoxical really. In an attempt to save ourselves from pathogens, we ourselves have become pathogens. We are the destructive, parasitic, life-sucking entities that we try to protect ourselves from. Nature is not out to get us, and we gain nothing from trying to destroy it. Nature is our mother, and she is there to provide us with everything that we could ever need. But nature needs cooperation from humans, not destruction. If we continue down this route of natural destruction, we will end up destroying life itself. It is no coincidence that we as humans are weak, sick, and toxic like never before. Food is the underlying way we're supposed to stay healthy. It's not visiting the doctor more often to get more and more drugs, which have tr terrible side effects many times. It's about eating whole unprocessed foods. That's what we've done for hundreds of thousands of years, very successfully. And we've somehow had a detour in the last 70, 80 years and, and lost the fermented foods and lost the whole foods and looked for that long extended shelf life dead food in our, in our food paradigm, which is, is horrible for what we are as bacterio sapiens. We need the bacteria, we need the enzymes, we need the wholeness of our foods to be healthy. I think the most concerning thing in all of this is that the population seems to have lost their right to choose their own food. Sure, some technocrats in suits might tell you that drinking raw milk is no good for you, but how does that give them the right to decide what you put inside your body? Especially when it regards natural healthy foods that we as humans have consumed for all of history. Even if we acted like raw milk was actually dangerous, its widespread prohibition would still make no sense. Think about this. I could walk into a supermarket, buy a packet of meat, and eat all of it raw right there on the spot. Now, I don't agree with this, but to many people this would seem like bacterial suicide. But how am I allowed to consume raw meat and not raw milk? Should we have a raw meat prohibition also? Government agents coming into your house to check if your steak is cooked all the way through? The fact of the matter is that there simply are zero good reasons for why raw milk should be made illegal. It's a natural food, and like everything else natural, it's a product of how you treat it. Milk and meat from antibiotic-filled, factory-farmed, feedlot animals is toxic. That should be self-evident. But whole, natural, organic foods will never be dangerous for humans to consume. The fact that I even have to explain this should show how far removed from nature we have become. In the end, those with a sound mind should know that all of this is not set in place by people who have your best interest in mind. It is set in place by people who want to either 1. Keep their profits or 2. Keep people from being healthy. Let's just take a moment here and acknowledge what is happening. We as humans are going to court so we can argue about whether we should be able to consume something that we have thrived upon for thousands of years. Look at this footage and really think about what is going on. Here we see a group of people, dressed up in suits, meeting at a designated building to discuss whether or not they should be allowed to drink milk. Milk that has not been altered by machines and technology that is. This is what we have come to. Meanwhile, big corporations like Monsanto, DuPont and thousands of big pharma companies keep getting away with literal murder. These companies are even protected by our very governments and their products are subsidized, making them even easier to acquire. All of this while the government uses mafia-like fear tactics in order to persecute people who simply want healthy, natural whole foods. In the past three years, there have been at least eight government raids across the U.S. involving raw dairy, according to the Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund. In this security camera footage, we see agents entering Rossum's kitchen. Guns drawn. 
Jarrell Winterhawk, a manager, has worked at Rossum for four years and was there the morning of the raid. We heard a banging on the back door. Uh, one of my workers, helpers, he went out there and says, hey, there's a cops out here. The police presented a warrant, so Jarrell let them in. They made me get out of the kitchen and I had to go sit over there on a chair and they searched me. They started walking around, they drew their guns and I'm like, why, why are you drawing guns? I didn't know what was going on. I mean, it seemed like they thought we had cocaine in the papayas or something. The raid on Rossum involved no less than five government agencies. The FDA, the Los Angeles Health Department, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office, and the California Department of Food and Agriculture. All five of these agencies declined interviews for this story, saying the investigation was ongoing. They just went into our freezer and they just took gallons and cheeses and whatever they wanted. They deliberately left this door open and the curtains open so it would spoil the food. And they knew this. By the end of the day, they kept it open for so long that a lot of stuff had gone hot and they couldn't sell it. Thousands and thousands of dollars worth of food. They don't want to see this happen. They want to stop this from happening. They're going to shut us down whenever they can in whatever way they can. An undercover agent posing as a mom busted a Bay Area operation that the state of California says is illegal. But it's not guns, not drugs. Dr. Kim Mulvihill shows us you can drink this contraband. Wednesday, state inspectors raided the farm with a search warrant. While serving the warrant, they not only put tags and tape on the coolers inside the store, they came in here where people actually get their raw milk out of a tank and they poured a dye inside the tank. They came with the director of, of uh, milk control, the, the uh, assistant director, um, yeah. and our inspector, and they all came and pretended they were just gonna do an inspection, and then they did a seizure. They showed up at 5.30 in the morning in the middle of a blizzard, and they had 42 armed federal agents and USDA officials, and they cleared out our entire barn. They took the sheep from, that we brought from Belgium and the Netherlands. They even took the sheep that I had brought over from New Zealand, and they took them out to Iowa, and they killed them for a disease that doesn't exist to this day. As an attorney and a former government employee, I need to point out, I'm scratching my head trying to figure out why is this so important to the government? Why are they cramp stamping down on, you know, the little guy? Why don't they go after the foods that are inherently dangerous? So to me, that's the $64,000 question is, what's motivating these governmental officials to crack down on small family farms? Are they being financed by big agribusiness? Are they being financed by the dairy industry? What's causing all this? Do these government officials come from big agribusiness companies and then go into government. If you watch my latest videos, you'll know that this is much bigger than just milk. This is a war, a war on nature, humanity, and creation itself. And I have bad news. These forces won't stop before every last bit of your biology and consciousness is in their control. It's time to wake up. Wake up and look the shadow in the eyes which has taken over this realm. Whether it's raw milk, big pharma, spirituality, psychology, or whatever, we can all play a part in uncovering the evils that dominate this realm. We can all help liberate and awaken the human species. I want to continue producing content that supports this exact purpose. I want to build a team of like-minded people and take these documentaries to the next level. You can help me in this journey by supporting me on Patreon. I also encourage everyone listening to participate in this journey with me. Create your own content, be the change you know must happen, and commit your heart to everything that is good and righteous. At the end of the day, the truth is always going to prevail. Whether it's going to take two years, five years, or 30 years, I do not know. All I know is that a system based upon destruction is bound to eventually destroy itself. So pick your side. Will you fall together with Babylon? Or will you honor the mother that birthed you? Consistit summa, refecta in mortalis und natura, predit acerte aurigitur, os und ad nilum queque, ad nilum queque reverti, quotsine, quotsine, o, 